Listen, can you hear it? No gunshots, no blood curdling screams for help, no cries of pain, tranquil. Listen again, can you hear it? Laughter among friends, the crackling bry, children playing gleefully, bliss. Imagine all the people gainfully employed. Imagine all the people walking in confidence on the streets any time of the day or night. Imagine all the people having enough nutritious food to eat. Imagine all the people living life in peace. All of us standing here today have one thing in common, an eternal hope for a safe and flourishing South Africa. I stand here as an ordinary South African. I and every single one of you possess an infinite power. By harnessing that power collectively with passion, persistence and resilience, we can do more than any great leader has ever accomplished. Most of you will be familiar with the song A Million Dreams from The Greatest Showman. A million dreams is all it's going to take, a million dreams for the world we're going to make. We will move one million and then we will inspire 10 million and we won't stop until all 59 million South Africans are working together to make this prosperous rainbow nation a reality. Dear Mr. President and the South African government, six months until the next State of the Nation address. You know, that special occasion where MPs act like celebrities before listening to your speech or shall I say lie, where you claim we have a good story to tell. Let me save you the trouble for next year. Here is just a snippet of the real state of our nation. Your inflated cabinet, described as a bloated monster and a waste of money. Your cabinet earns in excess of 137 million rand annually, and that doesn't include all the perks, nor the salaries of other members of staff across countless failing departments. Our national debt crisis. You claim you will stabilize the 3 trillion rand debt, rising at a rate of more than 6,000 rand interest per second. By December, we will have a debt ratio of 80% of our GDP. Corruption and junk status. The Guptas, Belpottinger and Zonder Commission need I say more. Junk, Mr. President. That's what the world thinks of us. Junk. When you took your oath as president of this country, you swore to protect its people, all its people, not just the select few with whom you and your cabinet shake hands or by whom your hands are tied. COVID premiers. The Special Investigating Unit is investigating maladministration and corruption allegations to a sum of 5 billion rand. Ordinary citizens volunteered tirelessly to assist more than 20,000 stranded South Africans whilst your departments floundered for months to get them home. Education. We have one of the most unequal school systems in the world. Only 14 out of every 100 learners will reach university. Cooperative governance? In the De Beer case in June 2020, the High Court declared some of the regulations issued by Minister Nkosazani Dlamini Zuma under the Disaster Management Act as unconstitutional and invalid. The effects of this will be felt for years to come. Environment? Extinction, poaching, poor conservation, canned line hunting and more, Mr. President, are you proud? Health? Chronic shortages of staff, equipment, medication, oncology crisis, billions of rands in negligence claims, lack of ambulances, poor maintenance of infrastructure, the list goes on. Home affairs. Sorry, we're offline. Poor administration is the order of the day. Human settlements. 26 years down the line and millions of people still have inadequate shelter and lack of access to basic ablution facilities and clean running water. Doko has 126 foreign missions, costing the taxpayer around 4 billion rand per year. It's hard to see what the return on investment really is. And a sore point for all South Africans abroad is poor consular services. Public enterprise. ESCOM, SAA, Transnet, SABC and others. Our state-owned entities are a shambles, yet all you keep doing is restructuring. Like a washing machine constantly stuck on spin cycle. Mr. President, your spin doctor skills no longer charm us. Police. Boy, oh boy, I hope they're behaving themselves on the street today. Public works. Only 20 out of 257 municipalities were awarded clean audits this year. Tourism. Whatever may be left of it. International airspace closure resulted in a decrease of more than 90% of international arrivals and departures, causing a potential job loss of 400,000 workers. Mr. President, are you proud? Trade and industry. The ban on cigarettes and alcohol, officials dictating that cooked chicken is a luxury and what clothing items people can buy in winter, there are no words. This sums up just one third of the ministries within our cabinet. This is the very tip of an iceberg that is sinking countless titanics. Mr. President, 
At this year's Sona, you told us, and I quote, to forge ahead, permitting neither adversity nor doubt to divert us as we continue our onward march to improve the lives of our people, as we confront great challenges, as we too cannot allow fear to stand in our way well, Mr. President. As you can clearly see today across South Africa and the globe, we, the people, are doing exactly that. We do not fear. We are united. We forge ahead as passionate citizens, actively taking up the responsibility to make South Africa work. To quote, a speech, to quote from a speech by Simon Sinek, there are two things that great leaders need to have, empathy and perspective. Too often leaders swiftly forget their purpose is not to be in charge, but to take care of others who are in their charge. Bad things happen when good men and women do nothing. We are tired of bad things happening. It is time for all South Africans to unite for the common goal for which we stand together today. It matters not your gender, your religious or ethnic background or your orientation. If you've ever taken part in any type of team rowing activity, you will know the importance of everyone exerting equal effort and the value of everyone being in unison with the depth and speed their paddles into the water. For the boat to reach its destination, everyone must paddle. At Move One Million, nothing matters but your willingness to contribute to the future of South Africa. All we want to know is the size of your heart, not your social status. At Move One Million, we paddle forward together. To quote some lyrics from two of Pink's songs, Dear Mr. President, and what about us? Dear Mr. President, how do you sleep while the rest of us cry? How do you dream when a mother has no chance to say goodbye? How do you walk with your head held high? What about us? What about all the times you said you had the answers? What about all the plans that ended in disaster? We are millions of beautiful hearts and you sold us down the river too far. Mr. President, indeed, you and the rest of your cabinet have sold us down the river too far. And this is our response. We will rise up. We will rise and afraid. We will do it a thousand times again. For Kay and Dear Singh, for John Shabangu, for the Brand family and all others attacked and killed on our farms, we rise. This is not about colour. This is about protecting the people who feed our nation. For Anine Boyson, Tagrin Morris, Courtney Peters, Tasney van Veik, Nathaniel Julius, and all our children, we rise. For Uyaneni Mutiana, Shego Fatso Pule, Megan Kramer, and all our women, we rise. For Mochidi Pascalina, Nonki Smas, and every member of the LGBTI community, we rise. This is not about colour. This is about protecting our beautiful people. For every South African who has experienced any act of crime, we rise. For every South African without a solid structure to call home, we rise. For every South African without access to excellent education, we rise. For every South African facing starvation, 15 million and counting, we rise. For every South African who cannot find paid work, we rise. For direct elections that will give the power back to the people, we rise. As custodians of our beautiful biodiversity on which we so heavily rely, we rise. We rise up for you, our fellow citizens on home terrain. We rise. In spite of our differences, until we have an accountable, clean government, until we have one of the lowest crime and poverty rates in the world, until we have a stable, sustainable and rapidly growing economy, as proud South Africans, dear Mr. President, we rise. Amon la!